As you can tell from this giant box, I've got something really big to unbox right now. You guessed it, this is the new 2019 Mac Pro. So I've never actually seen one of these before in real life, so I'm super excited to see mine. Let's go ahead. And by the way, this thing was a beast getting it up the stairs. So we have the old famous Velcro sides on here. Let's open one of those. And they also, I've heard people talking about the texture on here. It kind of feels like the texture you get, you know, from wallpaper um, in a, like in a really nice bathroom. All right, so let's go ahead and undo the other one here. All right, this is it. <laughs> this is it, guys. Moment of truth. Wow. And we're lifting this up. Wow, this box lid is actually quite heavy, so that's good news. Wow. Ooh. Okay, so if we look on here, there's a little slider that comes right out. And on the other side, there's another little slider that comes right out. This is the keyboard. I can tell because it has a keyboard printed on there. And this one here is the mouse and the cables. All right, here it is, guys. The new Mac Pro. I've never even seen one before in real life, so I'm super excited. Let's put that down, and there's more stuff inside here. It's another box that slides out. Cables. Now, this is a heavy box. All right, and here it is, the Mac Pro. All right, and now we just need to slide this up. There we go. Let's take the plastic off. And we'll get a little tab here, let's tear it open. All the way around, tearing out this goodness. And the other side here. Wow, what a beauty. Yep, and it does look like a cheese grater on the front and on the back. So the back looks similar, except it has a bunch of I.O. ports. So there's only one thing better than unboxing a Mac Pro. And <laughs> that's unboxing two of them. Now oh, there's a YouTube thumbnail. So why is there two? Because I want to do a comparison of two of the Mac Pros for under $10,000 one of them featuring the Vega 2 32 gig and the other one with the eight gigs of video card. All right, so we've got the accessories there. Let's have a quick look. Of course, the big thing is the giant Apple stickers. Very big stickers right there. We've got the power cable, Lightning to Thunderbolt 3 for charging the mouse and keyboard because those are both wireless. Right now, it's a nice shiny. It's the black magic mouse right there. Okay, so the keyboard here is nice full numerical keyboard here with the black keys on it. Okay, now for the moment of truth. Let's have a look inside. So we pull this handle up and we turn it and we lift. Wow, that's a really tight seal and that's got some weight to it. Okay, so if we look at it in the front here, we've got our fans, the three fans to provide lots of circulation. And then here we have our logic board. Let me turn it around so you can see it. There's all the good stuff there. So if we look up here, we've got our processor and power supply in here. So if we look at the PCI Expresses, we've got four double wides here. We've got 
and four single wides. One of them's a half length, which has the I.O. board, which is our in-out board where our Thunderbolt ports and everything like that go on to. Then in here, we've got more ports so we can plug things in. And of course, you know, we've got the Radeon 2 card here. If I was to put a second GPU in, it would take up this additional space right there. On the other side, this is where we have our SSDs and also our RAM. If you install DIMMs of mixed capacity, just make sure you install them in order of channel, make sure they're in identical pairs, and also go from the order of the smallest to largest. If you look on the inside of the RAM cover, you'll see a guide. So you can install your own RAM, just make sure you don't mix speed or type of RAM. Use only R or LR DIMMs. All right, so if we look at this, we've got the handle on top, of course, so we can take the case out. This is a very solid um, aluminum. We've got two Thunderbolt 3 ports up the top here, which also work on USB-C, of course. And if we look on the back here, I've got the headphone jack here. I've got two Thunderbolt 3s and two USB Type A's. And then because of the, um, the Radeon 32, the Radeon Vega gives me four Thunderbolt 3 slots, HDMI, and then we've got the two ethernets there for connecting to a network, which is good for going to like a server or hardwiring in which I do for my internet. Um, I can get much faster internet hardwired than I can through Wi-Fi. So how does the size of this compare to the original cheese grater Mac Pro? Well, let's have a look. Okay, so there we go. There's the new one. And then here's the older one. And if we want to look at the profile on the front, bring those together there. So although this is big and beefy, it's actually a little bit smaller than the older cheese grater. Looking at this, this thing is a work of art, which of course is no surprise coming from Apple. Um, you know, just the workmanship on this, the quality of the build is just amazing. It has this stainless steel space frame chassis and everything here is functional. What I love is the way that, you know, it's designed for cooling. All right, guys, so I've set up this Mac Pro and I've started working on it. In fact, I've been editing the video that we're doing right here. Um, I was working on three layers of video. So applying lumetri color as well as speeding it up and doing 400% speed with three layers of video and it just going perfectly smooth. It's really incredible. Um, I've never actually been able to work like this. This is what I've been dreaming of, to be able to work on my video and just have it playing back smoothly all the time. And so far, that's what I'm getting. So I'm really happy and uh, I'm really excited to do the tests and bring them to you guys uh, very soon. All right, so I know a lot of people are gonna say, hey, you know, these things are expensive, it's a joke. You could have got a PC much cheaper. Uh, you could have built your own PC for half that money and then have enough to go on vacation. Um, these are the kind of comments that uh, I know people are saying. Well, let me just talk about this for a second, not necessarily to justify, but to explain why uh, you're paying this kind of money. So number one, this is a workstation class machine. It's a Xeon processor. It's not the same as just looking at hard specs. In fact, if you look at a PC, which is workstation class, say for example, the HPs, you know, I looked at some and I started specking them out. They were coming in around about $12,000 for the configuration I wanted. So there's a, there's a big difference. Now, here's the thing. The difference is, you know, something like this workstation class is designed for more than just going fast. They have to do fast video. They have to do fast reading and writing. They have to be able to handle really large files. They need to be able to process these files without errors and they need to have really good cooling so they can keep going for prolonged periods of time and also run quiet. So these with the cooling system designed in here, it's whisper quiet. It's very, very quiet. You don't hear the noise and this can keep working. For example, I could have over a hundred videos in a queue and I've had my machines running for two or three days, constantly nonstop at full power just rendering videos. And I got seven years out of my trash can Mac Pro. I got 10 years out of my old uh, cheese grater before that. And the reason is that these are built to just keep going. They're reliable, they're workhorses. Even when they start to get older and they start to get slower, they still keep performing the work reliably day in, day out. And for me, this is how I make a living. I make my money 
working on my computer. I don't want to be messing around with my computer. I built my own machines and I'm always updating drivers, always fixing things, always trying to keep it, you know, tweaking it, keeping it running at optimal performance. When it comes to my work, I don't want to be working on my computer. I want to be working with my computer and I want the computer just to be there and just keep working. Um, I prefer just to have year in, year out reliability. And for me, a machine that costs this much money is going to pay for itself over and over again. Now, this is not the machine for everybody. Let's also talk about that. Like, let's let's just talk about that term professional because it's been really kind of misused and misunderstood. A professional doesn't mean you're better at something than somebody else. You know, if you're an amateur, it means you're not good. If you're a professional, you're better. No, that's not true. A professional is somebody who makes their living or makes their money doing something. You know, there's home chefs that can cook better meals than professional chefs. But the professional chef makes their living out of it. It doesn't mean that the other person is not good at it. There's people that are really good at Photoshop, that are better than a lot of professionals at Photoshop, but maybe they make their living a different way and they don't choose to make their living in Photoshop or editing video. You know, maybe you're really good at editing video, but you prefer to, you know, maybe you're a dentist or maybe you do something else for your main living. So in that case, you know, you got to think about the tools of your trade. So, you know, if you're a serious hobbyist and you're like, you know what, I really love Photoshop and, you know, and I, I do a lot of Photoshop stuff, but I'm not making my living for it. You know, I can't spend 10,000 or 8,000 or, you know, 6,000 where this starts with on a computer. It just doesn't make sense for me. Then, you know, this is not the right machine for you. Um, there's the high end user, the person that's, you know, going to get the 28 core. You know, this is the person working on major motion pictures. You know, they're doing visual effects. So they're doing multi-track recording, working in a big recording studio, recording every day, day in, day out. It's, it's, it's a tool. That's the kind of a person that that machine is built for. Now there's someone who's a video editor. If they're doing a lot of heavy video, um, maybe, you know, production studios and places like that are going to buy a lot of these machines and they're going to be buying the monitors and putting them to good use. Now myself, for the kind of work that I do, I do 4K video. I'm not doing multiple streams of 8K video, so there's no reason for me to buy the 28 core. I would never use it. I wouldn't get the use out of it. And even at this time, even the Afterburner card, I wouldn't get the use out of that because I'm working in Premiere Pro on 4K video. I don't need multiple streams of 8K right now. But because it's expandable, if my needs change, I can change that later. So when you look at this, you can see the different configurations and the different processors. They go all up to the, they go all the way up to 28 core. Um, so I'm looking for bang for the buck. So both this computer and the other one that I'm going to be testing, both of these came in at under $10,000. So I felt like the 12 core processor was a good move up, a good way to spend money. Um, the problem with the eight core is it uses a slower RAM. The 12 core uses the same RAM as the rest of it. So if you want to expand out your RAM and things like that, you're you're getting you're taking advantage of that but um so i wouldn't say you should spend a lot of money on ram you could get the third party ram a lot cheaper and load it out that way um, the ssds i went to one terabyte of ssd because that's a good amount for me for internal because i pretty much all i keep on there is my operating system and uh and my applications everything else i run off a thunderbolt 3 raid so if you're thinking about buying one, here's a really good deal right now. Um, I, I wasn't going to get an Apple card. I'm really happy with my American Express. But until the end of the year, you get 6% off the computer, a 6% cash back if you use the Apple card. So I went on the app on my iPhone and I signed up for the Apple card. It took like two minutes to be approved and then I get 6% back. So that was definitely worth it. And whether or not I use the Apple card again after that, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. It's worth it for the cost saving. So the configuration I'm looking at is something more along, you know, what you guys, creative professionals, would be considering. So I'm going to be doing a comparison here with the 32 gig card and also the 8 gig card, and uh, and I'll be posting that in the next day or two, and then you can kind of see is it worth spending the money on that or not. So I'll give you my configuration here. These these are the specs that I got, um, and so what I'm looking for is you know the machine that I can get going now, which is going to do my work right now and give me the flexibility to upgrade uh, later on as you know funds permit as prices come down and as new gear comes out I'm you know I'm really looking for something that's going to future proof and I think this this box is going to do it so anyway guys this is the first look of this computer um, 
I'm going to go and plug it in now and start installing some software on it. And I'm going to let you guys know how it goes. And check out my video where I'm going to show you guys the speed test. So what I'm going to do is a few things on my speed test coming up. I'm going to compare the speed of the Mac Pro to the other Mac Pro. So that's the 32 gig video card versus the 8 gig. So in the US, that's a $2,400 difference. Is that worth it? Yes or no? And I'm going to compare the speed to the latest MacBook Pro 16 inch fully loaded. And I'm going to compare the speed to my trash can Mac. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was informative. Um, drop a comment underneath if any questions or anything like that, or, you know, any comments. What do you guys think about this? Um, are you going to be sticking to your MacBook Pros and iMacs, or are you going to be considering something like that? I'd be really curious. And anyway, guys, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You can become part of the Cafe Crew, get a new video from me every week usually every Tuesday, so ring that notification bell so you know when I upload it. So don't forget to smash the like button into dust, and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.